In this video, I'm going to go over how we label the periodic table. There are words that we use to describe different areas found on the periodic table. So the first thing we'll start with is what we call the rows and the columns. So a row on the periodic table is called a period. So here we have, I could look at any row, so this would be a period all the way across. Or if I came down here, so that, as, or my pen is going, that would be a period, right? This would be a period. So any of the rows are called periods. Now the periods are numbered 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. This periodic table actually has the numbers on both sides. So if you had something that said, um, ask, asked about an element in period four, for example, you would go to the fourth row and every element in this fourth row right here are in period four. Now one thing, notice down here, since these two uh, periods come from this section, they don't uh, change the numbers. Like, so the first row down here are called, uh, is period six, and then this one is period seven. So just as a um, note. So the periods are called, uh, uh, sorry, the rows are called periods. Then we have the columns. So the columns are like the towers, they're the up and down. So any column, like this would be a column. Whoops, sorry, I went down too far. This would be a column. This would be a column. This would be a column. So all of those are called groups. The columns are called groups. And these groups have um, numbers and letters on the top of them so we can identify what they are. So what you'll notice is uh, on the top, there's a number, for example, on this one right here, there's 2A. So you would call that group, group 2A. Then if you notice underneath, they also just have the number 2. So traditionally, the periodic table groups would have a number and a letter, and the letter is A or B. If you investigate all of the tall columns here, they all have A's. And then the shorter columns here, if you look, they all have B's. So we have 2A, 3A, 4A, so they had a number and a letter. On some periodic tables, this number here will be a Roman numeral. So for example, 2A would have Roman numeral 2 and an A. Now that's the more traditional way. Modern way of labeling is just simply using the numbers 1 through 18. So if you look uh, just below the numbers with the letters, you see that there's just one, two, and then it comes here, three, four, five, six, seven, all the way across till we get to 18. So each group could be identified in different ways, either with a number and a letter, like this group here would be 4A, or a number. That group with the arrow that I just drew would be 14. So just get in the practice of understanding or knowing and using the word period for the rows and then the word group for the columns. Now inside the periodic table, they also have large blocks of elements that have names. Now in class, we talked about metals and nonmetals and metalloids. So that's one way to classify the elements. But here's another way, surprise, surprise. So we have three areas, and I'm gonna to go to the periodic table in just a minute to show you.
but we have main group elements, we have transition metal elements, and we have inner transition metal, uh, transition elements. Um, so let me go on to the periodic table and show you where these larger groups are on the periodic table. So this is a periodic table that we've used in class. So the main group elements are all of the tall columns. Okay. Now what all of these columns have in common is their groups have the letter A. So every group that has an A, all of the tall ones, are a part of the main group elements. Okay. The transition metals, or sometimes called the transition metal elements, don't get thrown off if they say transition metals or transition elements. They're referring to the same thing. The transition elements are all the ones in this middle section, the ones with the lower columns. And what you'll notice about all of their group numbers is they all have the letter B. And then finally, the third section on the periodic table, it's the only section that's not labeled right now, is this section that is pulled out. So it's these two periods, part, or parts of the period, I suppose. And those two sections are a part of the inner transition elements. They're also metals, so they could use the word metal. These are not labeled with group numbers. So uh, you can see here, they, they do not fit with the groups that are labeled on the top, um, and they don't have group numbers. So they do have period numbers. This is period six, and this is period seven, because they were taken out here but they don't have group numbers, and they're called the inner transition elements. So this is just another way of categorizing and putting into, um, may, uh, into large areas or blocks um, the different elements. So, so far, before we go to the next slide, just to remember, we are referring to the columns as groups, the rows as periods, and then on this slide, we've labeled three of the areas of the periodic table. The main group have the tall columns. They have A as part of their group uh, number. The short groups are called transition metals, and they all have B as a part of their group number. And then the inner transition elements are the ones on the bottom that are pulled out from the center of the transition metals. Now there are four groups that have their own names. Group 1A, 2A, 7A, and 8A. So looking at the periodic table, we're talking about these two groups here and these two groups here. So they're the first two groups and the second two groups. Now notice hydrogen is not considered a part of the alkali metals. It doesn't have the same kind of properties as they do. Hydrogen, I always refer to it as an independent element because it can have some properties of the alkali metals and the halogens. So um, even though it is a part of group 1A, hydrogen's not considered a part of the alkali metals. Now group 2A is the alkaline earth metals, and it's all of them. Group 7A is the halogens, and group 8A is the noble gases. 
So I put this periodic table here just to label it onto an actual periodic table. So we would have group 1A here, all of the elements here. These are a part of the alkali metals. Group 2A, which is right here, the whole thing. These are all part of the alkaline earth metals. Then if we go to the other side of the periodic table, group 7A, these are all a part of the halogens. And then if we go uh, here to the last one, group 8A, these are a part of the noble gases. If you hear birds and lawnmower, you might, may have blowers, uh, I'm sitting on my back porch letting my dog out. So that's why you hear all the outside noises. I hope it's not too distracting. Um, one thing I just want to mention to you here, so I did have a student at one point um, come to me and say that she had memorized all of these names and she felt confident with the four names but she was struggling putting them in the column that they belonged. And then she uh, told me that she realized that if you go from left to right on the periodic table, they were in alphabetical order. So like this is A-K-L-I, and then we have A-K-L-I-N, so that in alphabetical order, alkali would come before alkaline. And then H, anything that starts with H would come after A's, and then N would come after uh, the halogens. So that, I don't know if that will help anybody, but that helped her um, not mix up where each of these uh, groups are located. Now I have a couple of questions, and so I'd like to show you how we would think about these. If you have a periodic table that you've taken notes on, you can pause the video, try to answer the question, and then um, start it again to see if you get the right answer. So this just says, which of the following is a halogen? So in order to answer this question, you would have a periodic table. So um, I'm not gonna ask you just to memorize the halogens, what I want you to do is memorize their location on the periodic table. So let me come back here and I'm gonna erase my, oh, I wanna, let me grab another periodic table. I'm sorry, I erased everything, but I just wanted to erase a periodic table. All right, so the question was, what is a halogen? So to answer this question, you would need to know that this right here, that group 7A is the halogens. Okay. So let's look at the question. So we have calcium as our choices, calcium, oxygen, argon, and chlorine. So then looking at the periodic table, I see calcium, not oxygen, argon, and chlorine. So the answer is on that multiple choice question, chlorine is the halogen. So letter D. Now looking back at the other examples, calcium would be a part of the alkali earth metals. Argon here is a part of um, the noble gases. And oxygen in group 6A, that group doesn't have its own name. So let's try this one. And again, you can pause it, read the question, and try to answer it before we work through it. Maybe I can upload directly here a periodic table for us to look at. There we go. All right, so which of the following is a noble gas? 
So in order to answer this question, you would need to identify the noble gases, which are in group 8A. So it would have to be an element that's in this group. So looking, okay, I see neon, and neon is right there. So letter A definitely is. Uh, nitrogen is right here. So nitrogen is not in any of the named groups. It's in group either 15 or 5A, depending on what you are looking. So it's not nitrogen. Fluorine is right here. And fluorine is in group 7A. That's a halogen and then carbon, which is right here, which is in a group without a, a separate name. It's either group 14 or 4, uh, 4A. So the answer to this question is neon is uh, a noble gas. Okay, and so one more, and I'm gonna go ahead and I liked when I pulled in the periodic table for us to look at, at the all at the same time on the same page. There we go. So it says, which of the following is a main group element? So to answer this question, you would need to remember where the main group elements are. The main group elements are all of the tall columns, or you can think of all of the ones with an A, whatever's easiest for you. So all of these are main group elements. So, reading the question, I see that lithium is right here. So, lithium is a main group element. Now, I'll tattle on myself. When I was doing this uh, slide on my, um, my live online class uh, over, I guess it was during COVID, and I did a poll, and I always participated in the polls, and I clicked very quickly letter A, only to find out after I read the whole question that I was wrong. I thought about taking it out of the slides, but then I thought, you know, I need to remind people, read questions uh, completely through before you choose your answer. So lithium is one, and then I, find, I look at sodium, which is letter B. Sodium is right below lithium. It is also a main group element because it's in the orange uh, boxes. And then I come to iron, and iron is Fe, and it is not there. In the middle, if you recall, these elements in here are all part of the transition metals. So the answer is, since lithium and sodium are both in the main group, the best answer is more than one. And if I would have put in any elements that would have been uh, on this side over here, these are also in the main group. There were just none of them chosen as a part of this question. So that's uh, an overview of labeling the periodic table. So as you prepare for your exam and for progressing through the course, uh, just as a recap, know that periods are columns, uh, sorry, periods are rows and groups are columns, okay? Periods are rows and groups are columns. Know where the main group elements are, the transition elements, and the inner transition elements on the periodic table. And know the four groups that have their own names, the alkali metals, alkaline earth metals, halogens, and noble gases. And as you progress through the course or through this chapter, uh, if you have any questions, please let me know.